The 2016 UIM F1H20 World Championship left Europe and headed to the Far East, where the city of Harbin in northeastern China hosted its first ever Grand Prix. The capital and largest city in Heilongjiang province, Harbin is renowned as the Ice City due to its vibrant winter tourism, which is crowned by the world-famous annual Harbin Ice and Snow Festival. This eighth largest city in the People's Republic of China is a cosmopolitan urban metropolis with a long and glamorous heritage that mixes Chinese, Manchu and Russian influences over more than a century. Harbin today reflects this rich cultural diversity through its historical buildings and architecture, as well as showcasing the modernity and dynamism of a young and rapidly developing nation with a blend of sophistication, refinement and economic development that defines modern China. Downtown Harbin features historical cobblestone streets with fashionable boutiques, cafes, restaurants and parks where tourists and locals work and play, offering something for everyone all year round. The Grand Prix of Harbin is round four of the 2016 UIM F1H20 season and will be raced in the scenic Hulan Estuary Wetland Park. The weekend saw thousands of fans turn up, keen to cheer on the defending world champion and the CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. Once again, the Chinese showed their knack for putting on a festival atmosphere as the race venue resembled a kaleidoscope of colorful sights and sounds with a diverse range of entertainment to accompany the racing on the water. Locals didn't miss the chance to take a spin in the F1H20 two-seater. Now let's see what happened in the previous round. Round 3 returned to the sandy shores of Portimao, Portugal. Sammy Celio of Baba Racing looked on track to put recent disappointments behind him as he took pole position for the race. But a poor start by the Finnish ace saw three-time world champion Alex Carella and two-time defending world champion Philip Schiap gain the advantage, bumping Celio down to third, while Sean Torrente passed Jonas Anderson at the start to move up to fourth. Corella led for 14 laps until a trim problem gave the lead to Schiap, who never looked back. Yet more trim problems for Corella in lap 30 dropped the Italian down to fifth. Meanwhile, Celio in second kept up his pursuit of Schiap to finish the race runner-up, followed by Sean Torrente in third and Anderson finishing in fourth ahead of Corella. Corella still managed to hold on to a slim two-point world standings lead over Schiap in second and Torrente in third, going into the Grand Prix of Harbin, just six points behind Corella. There were nine teams and 18 drivers from 11 countries participating at the Grand Prix of Harbin. At this midpoint in the season, only six points separate the top three drivers, Corella, Schiap and Torrente, and the championship is still anyone's for the taking. The two back-to-back -back Grand Prix in China will prove decisive. The home advantage belongs to CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, with their two-time and defending world champion Philip Schiap of France leading their campaign on the heels of a memorable win in round three. But can he hold up under the pressure of the home crowds? Now uh, my team has a lot of experience and uh, uh, I think we know the pressure and uh, we control the pressure. It's good the pressure for the result and, um, and my team uh, uh, works hard for um, every race. With him on the team is the only Chinese driver on the tour, Zhang Ziwei, who is sure to have the locals cheering him on. Xiao! 
biggest rival, the man with whom he has shared the last five world championships, is three-time consecutive world champion Italian Alex Carella of Team Abu Dhabi, who saw his world standings lead cut down to two points last round. Yeah, it's close. I like this this kind of championship. I mean, uh, I lost one championship two years ago that I had almost 35 points uh, on the top from the second and I lose it, but I prefer this big challenge. I mean, uh, we are three, four drivers now that we can win this championship. It's big fighting. Uh, so I really can't wait to the end uh, of the season. Corella's teammate, Daniel Kamzi is a former two-time China Grand Prix winner and always one to look out for. Third in the standings is Sean Torrente of Victory Team. He's been on a very consistent graph over the years with a top three finish for the last three seasons, but number one has eluded him so far. Now with his new, more designed boat, he's closer than ever to achieving his dream. You know, we've been consistent. We've done thirds every race. Um, we're right where we want to be in the middle of the season, honestly. Um, we're, we're right there in the hunt, and now it's time to, to hopefully put our stamp on it and move ahead and stay ahead and, and seal up our first world championship. Baba racing legend Sammy Celio is a two-time world champion with a record 24 pole positions to his name. He's had a weak season so far with technical problems, but can his last pole win and runner-up finish in Portimao signal a return to form for the veteran Finn? Yeah, for sure. It was very, very difficult end of the last season and very difficult start of the season. And, uh, and of course, sometimes you need to even prove it yourself that you are able to do the ball still because it was wild when I signed has the last ball. So it was important to me myself and I hope we can do one step better here, have the ball and win the race as well. Celio's young teammate and former student Philip Roms is finding his form with a runner-up finish in round two that has put him in fifth place in the current world standings. Team Sweden's four-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Andersson is a former China Grand Prix champion in 2009. He's having his best season in a long time, currently fourth in the standings. The Grand Prix of Harbin will be raced on a very different circuit to what the drivers are used to. Just four pins, no right-hander, and very short, posing unique challenges for the teams and their setups. I mean, this is the first time this year without the right-hander, and uh, it looks very easy look, uh, from outside. It is quite easy as well, but going down that straight, there's a lot of wake, and the wake meets the wind, the side wind, so it's a little tricky. But... And the track is, you know, with a uh, high-speed track, and. You reach 200 every every each uh, three line and turns is like perfect. In these type of courses, you can go inside, outside. You can play. It's the right handers. They are nice to to watch, but sometimes they kill a little bit the overtaking. This promised to be a race and circuit like no other. Qualifying would be raced over three sessions, with the 18 boats being reduced to 12 after Q1 and then down to six after Q2, as each driver gets two laps and the circuit to themselves in Q3 to set their best times in their pursuit of pole position. In Q1, Christophe Larigo of F1 Atlantic team and Mert Stromway of EMIC team managed to just make the Q2 cut ahead of Francesco Cantando and his Blaze performance teammate Bartek Marsalek. Victory team's Nadir Bin Hendi lost control of his boat and flipped over right in the first lap. He was okay, but his Harbin campaign was effectively over. I started pushing like crazy. You know, everyone wants to push. Pushed and I don't know what happened. I just saw the boat just, uh, just took off. I was next to 27. He was ahead of me, so maybe his wind caught my boat and, and then I just saw myself in the boat. Jesper Fors of Team Sweden and Mike Simura of EMIC team were also unable to make the cut. But the big shock was Philip Schiap, electrical problems ending his Q1 session as he would have to settle for 15th place in the starting grid. Uh, no, we don't know, electric problem. He changed the battery, but it's not that. I don't know yet, but uh, it's bad result for, to, for tomorrow. In Q2, there was excitement throughout the session as barely a second and a half separated the whole field. Oh. 
Philip Roms qualified for his first ever Q3 with an excellent fourth place result in Q2. Jonas Anderson just made the cut in sixth, as did Eric Stark in a last gasp effort at the expense of Sean Torrente, who would have to start in eighth position. Disappointment for not having made Q3 yet again. A second best prop wasn't good enough to get to the shootout, and the best propeller wouldn't work there, so we start, I think, seventh or eighth, which is not very good, but it is our situation, so we'll do our best. Also out in Q2 were Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team and his teammate Larigo, along with Xiong Ziwei and Thani Alkamzi. In Q3, first out was Jonas Anderson, and he reproduced his incredible speeds in morning practice with an excellent 36.85 lap time, the fastest of the day so far. He was followed out by former pole winner Eric Stark, but he was unable to beat his fellow Swede nearly three tenths of a second off the pace. Third out was Philip Roms. The young Finn was flying out there, driving like a veteran of years. And what a result, 36.64, he nabbed provisional pull from Anderson. Philip Roms is the man to beat with three drivers left. <laughs> Roms teammate Sammy Celio was gunning for his 25th ever pole position and he was driving like a man possessed, hard and tight. He did it, Sammy Celio beat Roms to move into the lead with an incredible best lap time of 36.60. If anyone could beat Celio, it was Alex Corella. Corella knows how important pole position is, and he has 12 under his belt already. But he couldn't find the speed he needed, settling for a time of 36.90 and placing behind Celio, Roms, and Anderson. The last man out, Ahmed Al Hamali, was fast all day in practice and Q1 and Q2, and he produced a sensational run, but he was penalized for going outside the designated course which gave Sammy Celio his 25th career pole position. It's a 1-2 for Baba Racing and Finland as Celio and Roms top the qualifying grid, followed by Anderson, Corella and Stark. For the long, long time, uh, the team is the boat boats in the top. We work hard for the setup for that, but uh, of course, Philip had a little bit smoother weekend than I had, so I had some difficulties to find the setup. But luckily, it went, all went right in the in the last minute. The first Q3, I must say, I'm really happy with the result. After the hard race in Portimao, it's a really good result for me. The F1H2O family put aside the day's racing stress and action to enjoy some famous Chinese hospitality Harbin style. Race day. Drivers ran a final practice session to fine tune their race setups. Shiap needed to nail it if he wanted a fighting chance. This morning uh, we have the same setup for yesterday and it's perfect. Perfect with a full tank. I make a good time. It's a time uh, like in Q3 uh, yesterday. I'm very happy. But it was bad news for Torrente. Unable to find the performance needed, they decided to change engines, sending him to the back of the starting grid. Uh, we're having issues in qualifying as you saw yesterday and uh, this morning it's getting worse, so uh, we thought we had it figured out, but it's not, so we're going to try the other end, change it, uh, bite the bullet and start last. Sammy Celio was keen to go for his 13th career Grand Prix win as the 17 drivers prepared to do battle. Tens of thousands gathered to watch the action unfold as this crucial round four race got underway in the Grand Prix of Harbin. Too many boats, small uh, cars. It's going to be a big fight. It's a dream starting grid for Baba Racing, but they can expect trouble from Anderson and Corella. A 5 6 start for Emirates team drivers Stark and Al Hamali. Stromoy <laughs> Al 
Kamzi back in ninth ahead of Zhang Ziwei in 10th. And two giants at the back with a lot of racing ahead of them. Shiap starting in 14th and Torrente 16th. The final moments before the race, the tension is palpable. Savi Celio has a good start, as does Shiap, who blasts off the pontoon, leaving Torrente behind, and also Contando and his teammate Marcelic in his wake. Francesco Contando has to dodge to avoid his teammate ahead of him, who's struggling to keep his boat under control in all the spray. Celio leading the field, opening a small lead from the get-go. Behind him, Ramsen Anderson lock horns for second position, followed by Corella and Stark. Bad start for Duarte Benevente, who's passed by Stromoy, Xiong, and Daniel Kamzi. Celio first to the commitment buoy, Ramsen Anderson neck and neck behind him. Daniel Kamzi cuts across the field into the inside and out of his lane. That may be penalized. Benevente recovers from the start and passes Chinese driver Zhang Ziwei, as does Sean Torrente surging up from the back. Philip Xiap finding some clean water on the outside as he already moves up to eighth position before even the end of lap one. But it's Sammy Celio leading proceedings here with a three-way battle going on behind him. Further back, Torrente on Shiop's heels as they move up the field. Torrente trying to pass Stromoy. He clips an edge that throws him off course, but he recovers quick. Emirates teammates Stark and Alhamily racing together as they maintain their fifth and sixth positions. Alhamily trying to catch his teammate. No change in the top six. Celio opens a .63 lead over Roms, who's holding his own against Anderson and Corella, with Stark and Alhamily back in fifth and sixth. From Murat Stromoy's on board, we see Shiap making his way around Tani Alkamzi before Sean Torrente zooms past Stromoy on turn number two. Philip Shiap and Sean Torrente have already moved well within the top 10 as they continue their unstoppable climb up the field, setting their sights on the top five after just two laps in the 60 lap race. Further back, Benevente struggling in 13th, trying to climb back up to the top 10 as his F1 Atlantic teammate Christophe Larigo is passed by CTIC F1 Shenzhen driver Xiang Ziwei. Behind Al Kamzi, Sean Torrente and Philip Schiap lock horns as they continue to push their way up the field and toward the top five. Schiap and Torrente come close. Torrente not finding the space he needs on the inside as Schiap charges ahead. Celio maintains his lead, but Philip Roms is not letting that gap open. Behind him, Alex Corella has overtaken Jonas Anderson to move into third position and is putting the pressure on Philip Roms as Anderson stays in pursuit of the top three. Philip Schiap finally catches up with Tani Alkamzi, passing him on the inside to move up into seventh position. Right behind Schiap, Sean Torrente also catches up with Alkamzi, passing the Team Abu Dhabi driver on the inside to move up into eighth on lap four, as they now pursue the Emirates team drivers Alhamily and Stark. Torrente once again tries to take Schiap from the inside, but Schiap shuts out the man from Miami and maintains his seventh position with Torrente dogging his tail. You can see on the replay how Torrente sets it up, goes wide to cut the angle, build up a little speed and swoop in, but the experienced Shiap says try again as he holds off the challenge. The defending world champion's romp through the field continues as he takes on and overhauls Alhamily to move up into sixth position on lap six, and Alhamily must know that where Shiap goes, Torrente can't be far behind. Sure enough, Torrente sets Alhamily in his sights, coming up from behind, looking for any chance to get past the experienced six-time Grand Prix winner from Abu Dhabi. Torrente moving up steadily right behind Alhamily with his new Moore boat, taking on Alhamily's Baba. He catches up with Alhamily and goes around the outside. Alhamily nearly losing control, and Torrente does it. Torrente moves up to seventh. Here it is again, Torrente on the outside, nearly touching Alhamily's boat. Then Alhamily lays on the throttle, nearly losing control, but Torrente says bye-bye. Oh. 
Elio in the lead, enjoying the clear waters ahead for now, but he'll soon start encountering back markers on the short circuit. He extends his lead with Roms, but Roms still in pursuit of his teammate. Although he's coming under sustained pressure from Alex Corello right behind him, the Italian trying to catch the 22-year-old Finn. Philip Roms has been driving like a veteran out there, holding his well-earned second place start position against some of the best drivers in the world, while keeping two-time world champion Sammy Celio in his sights for 20 laps. Great racing from Roms. Jonas Anderson in fourth position, trying to catch Alex Corella and move into the top three. There's a collision! It's Philip Roms and Alex Corella! What a crash! Corella's cowling shoots up into the air. Roms' boat is upside down as the Osprey rescue team rushes to the scene. Here it is again on the replay. Corella and Roms squeezing into that turn. It's too tight and Roms goes over the top of Corella's boat. Thankfully, Roms was unhurt and Alex Corella was taken to hospital, but fortunately he suffered only minor injuries as the race went under a yellow flag. From Roms is on board, there's the crash moment. Water everywhere, Roms submerged. So I'm okay, I had a little situation with Alex. I, he was trying to pass me from the outside and then he was turning a little bit tighter than I was suspecting, but uh, I'm okay and we see in which condition is the boat. The boats line up for the crucial restart. Green flag. Celio had Jonas Anderson and Eric Stark just behind him, but it was Philip Schiap who flew through on the outside to overtake Eric Stark and set his sights on Jonas Anderson in second position. Eric Stark is bumped back to fourth. And sure enough, where Schiap has passed, Torrente will not be far behind as the blue victory boat also smokes Eric Stark, bumping the Swede down to fifth. Further back, Bartek Marsalek is trying to move into the top 10 with an EMIC boat in his sights, but the Polish driver is overtaken by Duarte Benevente on the far outside. Meanwhile, Al Hamily tries to catch his former teammate Danny Al Kamzi, but Al Kamzi manages to keep his distance, holding off the Emirates team driver. Two thirds into the race, lap 40, and Jonas Anderson holds on to his second position behind Celio, but with Schiap shooting sparks just behind him in third as he hounds the Swede. With 14 laps to go, Celio was followed by Anderson and then Schiap and Torrente, the two having moved up to third and fourth from 14th and 16th positions respectively, as five seconds separate the top four boats. Daniel Kamzi is fifth, but he's been declared disqualified for that cut through the course at the start of the race. Bad blow for Team Abu Dhabi. The positions remain the same with five laps to go. Celio headed for his 13th career win as the battle continues behind him in a last gasp effort in these final few laps. Al Hamili chasing Daniel Kamzi and he loses control. Al Hamili goes over in a spectacular flip. There it is again. That is a big crash. Al Hamili is uninjured, but his boat will once again need some serious work. The final few laps are raced under a yellow flag, which means Sammy Celio is the 2016 Grand Prix of Harbin winner. Great result for Baba Racing. Sammy Celio, number one. Torrente unable to make the podium this time, but fourth place is not too shabby. Stark fifth, Stromoy sixth, Benevente with a good seventh place result. Zhang Ziwei gets a point for China. Shame for Al Hamili. Okay, at the end, when I see Kaila out, I'm very disappointed for him, but the game. And uh, I take care of my position. I don't want to push too much. And uh, now we have uh, back on the good position of the championship. Before you do it, nice. Thank you guys. Schiap shoots to the top for the standings, seven points up on Torrente. Corella drops to third and Celio now a real contender for the title. <laughs> I shoot between two propellers and I, I don't know if it was wrong, I was fast, but not the way I want the boat to feel. <laughs> It was quite, 
quite tricky. Huh? I didn't spend any time to try to be to take Sami because I didn't have the setup for it. CTIC China team tops the team's table ahead of Baba and Abu Dhabi, victory team in fourth. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It was so hard weekend for us and was not right with the setup all the time and then get it this going, going right. So the small chance is still there the, now the winning this one, but I need to win the next one and two more. So let's see. That brings to a close the first ever Grand Prix of Harbin. See you in Liuzhou, China for round five of the 2016 UIM F1H2O World Championship. Wow, 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 wow.